there, Ashley here. Today I am sharing my top 10 minimalist art supplies that can be used for almost any art project. If you have a little one that's just starting to get into crafts and you don't really know where to start with what to buy, you've come to the right place. I can do about 95% of our arts and crafts in this house using these 10 items. So let's get into it. The first and the most obvious art supply to have is paper. And when I say paper, I mean white paper for general drawing and coloring and thicker construction or cardstock paper for different crafts. I like to have plain white printer paper always available and accessible for my little ones so when an artistic idea hits, they can easily grab a paper and get to work on whatever is in their imagination. White printer paper is also very useful for printing out templates or cutouts for different crafts. As for the thick colorful paper, it is definitely useful for a majority of arts and crafts projects. They make for great backgrounds and is incredibly versatile. I mean, if you look through Pinterest, almost every craft requires some sort of paper. One of my favorite ways of using construction paper is cutting different colors into pieces so my little one can create her own mosaic. She also enjoys cutting out different pieces and layering them to make a character. And here's a great tip for the papers that are cut into already and still have a lot of space left on them. It is to dedicate a drawer or a bag for all of the scrap paper. That way when it's time to create a new craft, you can look through the scrap pile first and find what you need before using a new paper. This way you can reduce waste and save money. The next must have art supply is, you guessed it, crayons. Creating with crayons are an easy and mess-free and stress-free way for your little one to express themselves. Now, opinions will vary on this, but my personal opinion is to keep the colors simple. It's tempting to go all out and buy the 128 pack of crayons, but in our experience, too many colors led to overwhelm and frustration trying to find the right shade of a certain color. Now, I'm not condemning the mega packs of crayons here. We love them, we think they're beautiful, but we have found that it is hard to find the right colors and it's harder to take care of them and to store them. I personally like to stick to a pack of eight jumbo crayons for my preschooler and a pack of 16 standard size crayons for my first grader. And before you throw all of those stubby crayons away, you can use them to do different projects. I haven't done this yet, but I hear about people melting them together to make a large multicolored crayon. I think that would be pretty neat to do. You can also use the old broken pieces to make a multimedia art piece by gluing them onto paper. The next essential art supply is markers. If you're wondering why have markers when they already have crayons, well, it's good for your little one to experiment with different kinds of mediums. Crayons are a great dry medium and markers offer a wet medium for your little one to play around with while being easier to control than paint. Markers are also better for making crafts, whether you're trying to write letters or make specific distinct markings, Markers just do a better job at showing up dark and bold and being more visible than a crayon. Remember to check your little one's markers from time to time. Nothing more frustrating than having your heart set on a color only for it to dry out halfway through the project. The next essential for your minimalist art collection is child-sized scissors. These can come pointed or curved at the tips. I'm very much on the cautious side and like to stick to the rounded tips while my child learns how to use this tool. Scissors are an important supply to have on hand because not only is there a lot of cutting and crafts, but learning to use scissors are important for your little ones because it strengthens their hand muscles and their hand-eye coordination and their fine motor skills. Cutting different lines and shapes also helps your little one develop strong focus and attention. Next up is glue. Glue obviously is the thing that sticks your arts and crafts together. There's the liquid white glue, and for something a little more mess-free, there's the glue sticks. Now, I don't know if anyone else's kid is like this, but my kids hate getting glue on their hands, so glue sticks are the preferred choice in our house. We even found scented glue sticks that make our crafts smell delicious as they dry. Next is dot stickers. What? Dot stickers? Yes, dot stickers. We have found dot stickers to be a versatile art supply in our house. You can use them as eyeballs if you don't want to buy googly eyes. We have used them for different themed unit study crafts and found they make for a fun mosaic-like craft or sorting crafts for preschool. And I know these aren't arts and crafts, but they also are very useful for different educational activities. Next is Play-Doh. Your little one can use Play-Doh in a variety of ways. They can stamp things, build things, and create their own sculptures. Play-Doh is wonderful for building those hand muscles and fine motor skills, prepping your little one for writing. A perk of Play-Doh is it's a medium that can be used over and over and over again. That's of course as long as your little one doesn't mix all the colors together right away. Don't tell me my kids are the only ones that do that. Next is paint. Now, I know paint is messy, but I think it's worth it to see our little ones experiment with such a fun medium. Paint has played a huge part in most of our arts and crafts projects as there are a million different projects you can do with it. And paint is not limited to paper. Your little one can paint rocks, 
ice, cardboard and toilet paper rolls, and science models. I prefer the Crayola non-toxic paints for my little ones. These have been a staple in our art box. For older ones, you can get acrylic paint, which will be more opaque and stick to more surfaces. There's water paint, which is a very relaxing one for my kids personally. And my favorite, because I don't really care for messes, are paint daubers. In my frugal opinion, they're a little on the pricier side, but it's well worth it because we have already used them for a lot of preschool crafts and cleanup is super easy. And piggybacking off of paints are paintbrushes. Paintbrushes offer your little one the ability to experiment with different shape brush strokes and different textures. Along with paintbrushes, you can cut up a sponge and use that as a painting tool for some crafts. You can use uh, Q-tips, you could even use toys. And of course, there's always great fun in using their hands and fingers. And lastly is tape. I know there's glue on the list, but there are some things that are just easier to put together with tape. And because my daughter really doesn't care for glue, tape is always her go-to for sticking things together. We like to keep clear scotch tape and painter's tape. Painter's tape can be used for making cool designs on a painting by sticking it down first and then painting over it. It's really fun when their painting is all dried up and it's time to peel the tape off and uncover the design underneath. I have also used painter's tape for numerous activities, including learning activities like um, reading and and alphabet and numbers. And there you have it, my top 10 art supplies for a minimalist art collection. Now don't get me wrong, yarn and feathers and glitter, they are all very fun to use, but sometimes the best crafts are made with the simplest of supplies. Don't feel like you have to buy the whole Michaels or Hobby Lobby store to give your child a good creative education. I will say it right now, the crayon has been my daughter's favorite art tool and probably will be for a very long time. It is definitely her favorite way to create. What is your child's favorite art supply? What do they like to create? Please leave it down in the comments so others can see it. I hope this video served you in some way. If it did, please hit that like button and subscribe if you want more tips and tricks on encouraging a love of learning in your little one. Happy learning. I will see you in the next one.